Hey everyone, this is the third and final part of our Night Sky HDRI series, and it's definitely the most complicated out of the three, so I'll try my best to explain everything. If you like the way these look but don't want to follow along, you can grab them over on my gum road for a dollar. They're set up so you can just plug them in and go without making adjustments. Alright, let's get started. So here we are in Blender 2.83. I originally made these textures in 2.82, so if you have that or a previous version, this should work fine. Okay, so I'm just going to switch into the shading tab over here. Make sure that use nose is checked. We're using Eevee for this and just go into render view here so we can see our scene. First thing we're going to do is add stars and I did this in a previous tutorial so if you want to see that you can just uh, click the little note that pops up on the screen over here. Okay so we have our stars here and let's get started on the galaxy. So first I'm going to add a mix RGB and this is just so we can add the stars to our, our finished galaxy scene. I usually start out with this. Just want to make sure that this is set to add and that the factor is all the way up. And then I'm going to set this to black. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to separate the top and the bottom. And I'll explain why later. But to do that, I'm just going to add another mapping node. I've done this a few times before if you've seen my other tutorials. Then a separate XYZ. And we're going to be using the Z, uh, which goes up and down. So when we plug it in here, you'll see that uh, white is up top. And we're going to use this like a mask. So the only thing you'll see is uh, the stuff on the top of the sky. And we do that by just duplicating this uh, mix RGB. Um, I'm just going to reset it by pressing uh, the, the backspace button over there and make sure that this is plugged into factor. So now if we set this to uh, black and white over here, it'll look just like it did before, except now we know if we plug anything in the white, it'll show up up top like that. Okay, so now we have our stars and we have our mask that separates the top and the bottom. And now we're going to need the base shape for our galaxy, which is just going to be a circle. And the way I'm going to do this is with a gradient texture. And I'm going to set that to spherical here. I'm going to grab this uh, mapping node up here and just duplicate that. And then I'm going to plug the factor into the white over here. And right now, you're not going to be able to see it. And that's because the sphere isn't big enough. Um, basically, what we want to do is stretch the sphere out on the z-axis until it's like a big cylinder. So I'm just going to turn z to 0 over here. And now we'll see uh, it's bright up top. And if we change the scale down, it's just a circle. So this is where I should explain why we're using this mask here. We're separating the top and the bottom because if I just view this on its own, it stretches out up and down, so it would actually make two. Um, but I only want there to be one right now. So I use this mask to make it so there's only one up top. And if you want to scale this back and forth a lot, but you don't want to keep skipping over the Z, um, you can grab a combine XYZ here and a value node, plug the value into the x and the y, but don't plug it into the z, leave that at zero. That way when you adjust this, it adjusts the x and the y, and the z just stays zero, so you only have to move one value, and I kind of like that. Okay, so next I'm just going to distort this a little so it's not as regular, add a little more detail. So the way I'm going to do that is by duplicating this mapping node first and putting it back here. Uh, select it and press backspace to reset it. And then I'm going to add a mix RGB. Make sure that this mapping is plugged into the first color. Add a noise texture. Make sure you plug the vector in here and then the, the factor into the second color. I'm going to turn this up all the way and just set it to um, multiply. I found that this uh, method works best for uh, this texture specifically, setting it to multiply. Um, and then you can adjust your value here to make it about as big as you want. Um, but first, I'm going to adjust the noise texture by turning the detail up all the way. You can leave the roughness like this. This is a new thing in 2.83. Um, and basically 0.5 is the way the noise texture used to work before. If you turn it up, it kind of uh, makes the details a lot smaller like that, and you turn it down, then it's just very smooth. So 0.5 is good for that. And then I'm just going to turn the scale up until we get about as much uh, detail as we want. Um, so maybe around, around 20 is good for this, I think. And then you can adjust the size the way you want. 
Um, but this is also something we can just mess with later too. So I'm just going to leave that seven, seven and a half. I'm just going to make some more space back here because we're going to have a lot of nodes. Um, I'm going to duplicate this gradient setup right here. And we're going to start making uh, this texture spiral. So I'm just going to duplicate that and move that over here, plug this in. And then I'm just going to move it down just to give us a little more space. And I'm going to throw in a combine uh, XYZ right here and a multiply uh, math node set to multiply. As we can see, when we move this rotation, the Z rotation, it spins like that. So we're basically just going to take this texture right here and plug that into the Z rotation so that, and I did this in one of my other videos about spiraling. Basically what it does is any part that is black, it doesn't rotate at all. And the parts that are white, it rotates. And uh, anywhere in between, it's just kind of like a gradual rotation. So we're just going to take this combine XYZ and plug it into the rotation and then preview everything. So you can see the middle is spiraling a little, and the way we uh, get it to spiral all the way out is by adjusting this value, because I duplicated that too. So I'm just going to turn that down to 1. And now this multiply right here that apparently wasn't hooked up, we can use that to adjust the, uh, the intensity of the spiral, basically. It doesn't have to be very high. If you look at a lot of pictures of spiral galaxies, you can tell they're kind of spiraling, but they're not you know, super exaggerated like that. So I think around six is going to be good for us right now. Another thing I'm going to do is take these two node strings that are plugging into uh, everything that's making our galaxy, basically, and separate those. And I'm just going to add these two together and then put a mapping node right here. Um, and this is basically, I'm going to reset that also. And this is basically just going to be um, responsible for controlling everything we've just done. So if you wanted to scale everything up without changing the noise texture at all, you just adjust the scale here minus the Z. So actually we can get those here too. The value is set to one. So you can basically just use that to uh, change the size. And you can also use the Z rotation to make it spin like that without distorting anything. Okay, so now that we have this, we can get started on color. And basically what we're going to do is use everything we've made up until now as a mask. So I'm just going to make some space right here and put another mix RGB node in front of it and plug that into the factor. And so now everything we just made is a mask where, uh, where this would be the sky and this would be the galaxy. So this next part is a little confusing and I'll try to explain my thoughts behind it as best as I can. We're going to make another mix RGB right here. Basically, this mix RGB node is going to control the brightness of the galaxy. And this mix RGB node is going to control our color and how bright the center is um, separately from everything else. This one right here is just acting like a mask that's using this as a driver. Basically, if we plug any color into here, and for this situation, we're actually going to use this noise texture. So I'm just going to take that color and plug it into here like that. And I'm just going to add a reroute node with the Node Wrangler add-on just so that is a little cleaner. So we're taking the color part from our noise texture and plugging it in right over here. And we can see that it is adding some like rainbowy colors here, but we would want to put that into the white. And so you can have this and be done with it, but I think it should look bright in the center. And that's why we have all these mix RGB nodes right here. We're actually just going to plug this uh, in over here. We're just going to set this to add. And then we're going to plug that into the white slot. I'm just going to turn the factor all the way up to. So the, basically, these two colors are being added together. Um, if we turn this white, we'll see that everything gets brighter. The idea behind this is that we're going to make only the center of it bright. The way we're going to do that is by taking our gradient texture that we already have and add a math node set to power and take the factor from there and plug that into the first color value. And I'll just uh, preview this so you can see what it looks like. If we set it to one, it will be like nothing has happened. And if we turn this up, it'll basically start to push all the light to the center like that. So if you plug that in here and preview everything, 
the higher we bring this uh, exponent, the more it gets bright in just the center, but it doesn't look quite bright enough. So I'm gonna add another math node set to multiply. So the power is ch changing where it's bright and the multiply, it's, it's saying how bright it is. So for now, I'm just gonna set this to something really high, like 100. And I think um, in the one I did on my own, I set this to around 30, and I thought that was a pretty good amount. So this is looking pretty good so far. Also, make sure you do have this set to add if you set this to mix. It basically mixes the two values together, which is fine, but instead we want both of them to be like on top of each other and add together. So add is the right setting for that. And between here, I'm gonna add a RGB curves node. And basically what this is going to do is make the middle of it a little brighter and the edges a little darker separately from the center. So the way I think of the RGB curves node is kind of like um, if you're using a color ramp and you had a third flag in the middle and you're just like moving it like this basically. If you were moving it forward like that, it would be set like this and back it would be similar to going like that. And then if you had this set to ease, just by default, like that, it would be something similar to, um, to that. I think this is the way that it looks best, if you ask me. Okay, and so now let's just try to make sense of what we've done. First thing we did was we made this gradient texture. And then we distorted it with this noise. And then we took another gradient texture and we used that for rotation to make it spiral. And then this one back here is to just control all, all of the other stuff. So we can like change in what part of the sky it is or whatever. Um, if you want it to like rotate, you can just rotate the Z value. To do that, you can basically just set a keyframe at the beginning if you want this to loop. Just going to right click and insert single keyframe, then go to the end, which is gonna be 250 and set this to 360. And then select the mapping node so that the keyframes appear. Select everything, T, and then uh, set the interpolation to linear. So now you can see once it gets back to this part, it'll just loop like that. But if you don't care about looping, you can just delete all these keyframes. Just type in here uh, this hash and then frame. And now this will match what frame it's on. Um, so it'll be really fast, but you can go in here and just divide it by some big number, so like 200, and it'll move very slowly. Basically, if you wanted the galaxy to be in a different part of the sky, you can just move everything by taking a mapping node, duplicating it, and putting it at the very beginning. So now that this mapping node is controlling like everything else in here, I'm just gonna um, clear that. You can use that to uh, move this to different parts of the sky like that. So I'm just gonna set this up so it's right behind our scene. And if you want to adjust the size, we have this, uh, this master controller right here. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. I hope this wasn't too confusing and that you learned a thing or two. Let me know if anything wasn't clear and I'll try to uh, explain it a little better. A lot of these techniques can be used for making materials, not just HDRIs, so don't limit yourself. Once again, check out my Gumroad for some goodies. Let me know what else you'd like to see there. Also, let me know what you'd like the next tutorial to be on. If you want to see what else I'm doing, check out my Instagram. I share stuff almost every day there. Links for everything are in the description. That's all for now. See ya.